पार्सेबल्स आइडेंटिटी फॉर फोर ए ट्रांसफॉर्म ए फोर ए ट्रांसफॉर्म ऑफ एक्स टी इज एक्स ओमेगा वेयर दिस एक्स ओमेगा इज इंटीग्रेशन ऑफ एक्स टी इट टू पावर माइनस जी ओमेगा टी विथ रिस्पेक्ट टू टी एंड फोर ए ट्रांसफॉर्म ऑफ वाई टी इज वाई ओमेगा वेयर दिस वाई टी इज Inverse Fourier transform of y omega, which is given by one by two pi integration of y omega e to the power j omega t with respect to omega. Now, if I take the complex conjugate of y t, then the right side becomes y omega complex conjugate of y omega and complex conjugate of e to the power j omega t is e to the power minus j omega t so this is 1 and this expression is 2 now parseval's identity for fourier transform says that integration of xt into complex conjugate of yt from minus infinity to plus infinity is equal to 1 upon 2 pi integration of x omega into complex conjugate of y omega from minus infinity to plus infinity this is the parseval's identity for fourier transform now let's see how it comes integration of xt into complex conjugate of yt in this expression we we will replace this complex conjugate of yt by the expression 2 so the integration is now integration of xt 1 upon 2 pi integration of complex conjugate of y omega e to the power minus j omega t dt now i will change the order of integration i will first integrate with respect to t and then with respect to omega so the expression is now integration of obviously 1 upon 2 pi is constant so it will come out of integration integration of complex conjugate of y omega then integration of xt e to the power minus j omega t i'll first integrate with respect to t and then integrate with respect to omega and this integration of x t e to the power minus j omega t is fourier transform of x t that is x omega so now i can write 
इंटीग्रेशन ऑफ प्रोडक्ट ऑफ एक्स टी एंड कॉम्प्लेक्स कॉन्जुगेट ऑफ वाई टी फ्रॉम माइनस इंफिनिटी टू प्लस इंफिनिटी इज वन अपॉन टू पाई इंटीग्रेशन ऑफ एक्स ओमेगा इंटू कॉम्प्लेक्स कॉन्जुगेट ऑफ वाई ओमेगा फ्रॉम माइनस इंफिनिटी टू प्लस इंफिनिटी This is the Parseval's identity for Fourier transform. Now, if x t and y t, the two signals are same, then this Parseval Parseval's identity is integration of x t and complex conjugate of x t from minus infinity to plus infinity is one upon two pi integration of x omega into complex conjugate of x omega. Now this complex conjugate of x sorry x t into complex conjugate of x t is mod of mod of square of x t. Similarly. The product of x omega and complex conjugate of x omega is mod of square of x omega. So now this Parseval's identity is integration of mod of square of x t from minus infinity to plus infinity is one upon two pi integration of Mod of mod of square of x omega from minus infinity to plus infinity. Now the left hand side is integration of mod of square of x t from minus infinity to plus infinity. Now if this x t is a periodic signal, then the left hand side of integration gives the energy of energy of xt and mod of square of x omega this is energy spectral density of xt and this energy spectral density is nothing but energy per unit bandwidth so this can also be written as integration of mod of square of xt from minus infinity to plus infinity is 1 upon 2 pi integration of s x omega from minus infinity to plus infinity and this s x omega is the energy spectral density of x t so this is the parseval parseval's identity or parseval theorem for fourier transform now we can write this theorem in terms of f also the fourier transform of xt is xf fourier transform of yt is yf then integration of xt into complex conjugate of yt from minus infinity to plus infinity is simply integration of xf into complex conjugate of yf from minus infinity to plus infinity and if xt and yt are same then it becomes integration of mod of square of xt 
from minus infinity to plus infinity and that is equal to integration of mod of square of xf from minus infinity to plus infinity this left hand side gives the energy of xt and mod of square of xf is energy spectral density of xt here the unit for energy spectral density is joule per hertz and for sx omega unit is joule per radian per second now let's see few examples of parseval theorem or application of parseval theorem where we can use this parseval theorem to find the energy of signal suppose xt is sin t and we have to find the find the energy of xt so first we know that fourier transform of rectangular pulse is sin function and by duality property fourier transform of sin function or sin t is rect f rectangular pulse and this rect f rect f is one from minus one by two to plus one by two and zero otherwise now we will apply the parseval theorem to find the energy of xt energy of xt or energy of sink sink t is integration of sink square t from minus infinity to plus infinity and by parseval theorem it is integration of rect f mod square of rect f from minus infinity to plus infinity left hand side is integration of mod square of xt and the right hand side is integration of mod square of xf from minus infinity to plus infinity so lower limit is now minus 1 by 2 upper limit is plus 1 by 2 and from minus 1 by 2 to plus 1 by 2 rect f is 1 square df so now if we integrate this then it is f lower limit minus 1 by 2 upper limit plus 1 by 2 so this will give 1 so energy of x sin t is 1 and we have used the parseval theorem or parseval's identity for fourier transform to find the energy of sin t now let's see one more example of this parseval's identity for fourier transform here xt is sin square t and we have to find the energy of xt now we know that 
Fourier transform of triangular pulse is sin square f. And by duality property, Fourier transform of sin square t is triangular pulse or tri f. This tri f or triangular pulse looks like this from minus 1 by for, from minus 1 to plus 1 it is non zero and it is zero otherwise now i can write the expression for this uh, triangular pulse this tri f is it is a st straight line from minus 1 to 0 with slope slope is plus 1 and intercept on vertical axis is 1 so it is f plus 1 from minus 1 to 0 and from 0 to minus 1 slope is minus 1 and intercept on vertical axis is again plus 1 so it is minus f plus 1 from 0 to plus 1 and it is 0 otherwise so this is the expression for triangular pulse now we will apply the Parseval's identity for Fourier transform to find the energy of xt. Sink square t square. In the right hand side, lower limit has to be minus 1, upper limit 0 and from uh, minus 1 to 0 function is f plus 1 plus 0 to 1, from 0 to 1 function is minus f plus 1 square. Now this triangular pulse is even function. So right hand side is right hand side can be written as twice of any one of the any one of the two integrations. Twice of integration of f plus one square from minus one to zero. Now if I integrate this, then it becomes f plus 1 cube by 3 lower limit of integration is minus 1 upper limit of integration is 0 now if i substitute the limits then it is uh, 0 plus 1 cube that is 1 and minus 1 plus 1 cube that is 0 it is 2 by 3 so energy of sin square t is 2 by 3 and uh, to find the energy of sin square t we have used Parseval's identity for Fourier transform.